physics lesson with Mr. M. In this video lesson I'm going to be focusing on standing waves, particularly fixed string harmonics. And by a fixed string uh, we mean a string that is um, not moving at both ends of the string. Uh, and that's really where we get this idea of a standing wave uh, to begin with. A standing wave is a wave in which you have parts of the wave that are moving and parts of the wave that are not moving. And fixed string harmonics would kind of fit into any string instrument. Think of your guitar, violin, cello, um, where they use those strings to give us different um, harmonies and frequencies. And so uh, in this lesson, we're going to take a look at um, standing waves of fixed strings. And so uh, standing wave of fixed string um, is, is exactly what you would think of it. Um, think of that guitar string where you are kind of uh, we have the two ends that are not moving, and if we were to pluck that guitar string, we would get a wave that looks something like this, okay, where um, that string is going to kind of start vibrating up and down, okay, and so this is kind of like a time elapsed picture of that guitar string, and because this is the most basic um, standing wave for a fixed string, you can't get any more basic than this where you have both ends bolted down. We call this the fundamental frequency. Okay, fundamental because it is the lowest um, that you can get with the standing waves. This is also known as the first harmonic. So it has actually two names and so that might kinda trip you up sometimes. Okay, so it's known as the fundamental frequency, also known as the first harmonic. And all of, all of the um, different harmonics that we're going to be looking at are all based off of the same equation, that same wave speed equation, where our velocity is equal to our wavelength times our frequency. And the problems in this unit uh, for standing waves they're typically going to ask you to solve for the frequency. And so we're just going to rearrange this equation to solve for the frequency. We're going to divide by the wavelength. So our frequency is going to be uh, wave speed divided by wavelength. And the reason why I bring this up is because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be kind of comparing the the wavelength of our standing wave to the what's known as the length of the string. Okay, so you might recognize that if we just were to take this top half of this wave, how much how much of a wave is that? Well, technically, it's only half of a wave, right? Um, so we could uh, essentially fill in the rest of this wave so that I can show you that it's only half of a wave so we're gonna if we were to continue this kind of equilibrium line if I were to continue this wave here we would see that we don't get a full wave until we double the length of our string and so let's come up with a, a real quick equation here that compares the wavelength to the length of the string and that's how we're going to kind of get an equation for this first um, fundamental. So we just said that the wavelength for this fundamental frequency is two times the length of the string. So by substitution, our fundamental frequency or the frequency on that first harmonic is going to equal the wave speed divided by two times the length of that string. Okay. Um, so let's, let's move on to the next harmonic and we're going to kind of see the same pattern here. Well the fundamental or that first harmonic had two places, two what are called nodes um, that are not moving and it had one anti-node. To get to the next harmonic you just add one more node. So instead of having two nodes we're going to have three nodes and it's going to look something like this where if we were to place something right in the middle there we would end up with a standing wave that looks something like this it has three nodes we call this the first overtone 
So we call this the first overtone. Or we call it the second harmonic. All right. And so once again, let's compare the wavelength to the length of the string. Well, you can see here, I have one full wavelength that covers the length of my string. So my wavelength, in this case, is the length of the string. So the frequency of the what's known as the second harmonic would be V over L. Now let's do one more. Um, let's do our third harmonic here, where we would have four nodes. I like to draw those nodes first, and then start drawing my wave. Okay, and then um, here I have one wavelength that kind of goes from here to here, and we see that that is not one full length of the string. In fact, if these are all equally spaced out, that is two-thirds of the length, so my wavelength is two-thirds the length of our string, and so if we go ahead and give our third harmonic, um, we would have V over two-thirds L. And before I forget, we call this um, we call this the second overtone, and the third harmonic. Okay, so hopefully this video has helped you kind of uh, understand how we get um, these different um, frequency equations for our standing waves of fixed strings. You'll notice that if we were to just keep going, keep going adding more nodes, um, the only thing that's gonna change is that relationship between the wavelength and the length, but that's for what we call every whole number multiple. So we consider this, um, this first harmonic is actually considered um, N1, so like, n equals 1, uh, n equals 2, n equals 3. Uh, you can keep going, n equals 4, 5, 6, and that would apply to all of those different harmonics um, to create these uh, or derive these frequency equations. Okay, so hopefully, once again, this video has kind of helped explain how we get those different um, frequency equations. Thanks for tuning in.